Hey everyone, it's me, Nick Avocado. I'm back home from the fryer. I'm home. Hello, we're back home from the kitchen. We're home. Hello, and this is odd and steamy because we're eating Amberlynn Reed's leftovers. Yep, pretty much, you guys. I just reheated everything. Ouch, 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 ouch. Because we'll get, leave and let that cool out, you know? So I just posted a video like five minutes ago on my main channel. I filmed it today and I was telling the truth. Well, first of all, everyone's like, wow. Oh my gosh. I can't believe she ate all that. And, you know, here's the thing. I, I said, what, what, what do you eat in a day? Or like, what would you eat on a big cheat day? Or like, what's your favorite foods? And that's what she told me. She was honest. Would you rather hear honesty or, you know? I think it's better than hearing like, oh, you know, salads and like a, a piece, a piece of ham. You know, it's like all out. And I said in the video, I'm like, she, I wonder why she just doesn't record it. At least people will know what she's eating. And uh, there's no mystery there. And honestly, she can enjoy it on camera. I don't know. But anyways, um, so I just posted it. I don't even know what the reaction is other than like a few comments are just like, oh my gosh, how should you, oh my God. I don't know. But all I did say in the video, I'm like, listen, I guarantee I'm going to be hungry later on today. And I was right. So welcome to my other channel. Because I'm not posting the same thing back to back. But no one in my family wants these. So. My family's like, you're going give to give us diabetes. So enjoy your food. I'm like, okay, more for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Amberlynn Reed does. She takes her um, hash brown, puts it on top of her sausage and egg, cheese, spicy, um, I almost called it, yeah, a burrito. Follow my Instagram at Nickocado Avocado, and if you do, I might just follow you back. It's called it, yeah, a burrito from McDonald's. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm. Where's that hot sauce? Where's that hot sauce? This is literally leftovers. <laughs> Look, I was doing my ramen. Do you know why I was so, like, not, um, here's hot sauce. So, in the video on my, um, daily channel, which is no number three, I could barely eat. I mean, I ate, but, like, I thought I could eat way more than that, you know what I mean? And I got all my appetite back now, so. Mmm. 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 That is so good. I love that combo. I've never done that combo before. I never thought of doing that combo. Chicken. Mmm. Mmm. Give me a second. Mmm. <laughs> Give me a second. Mmm. Mmm. Mm hmm Spicy chicken nose. I still have some ranch over here. Oh, this is delicious. Mmm. Wow. <clears throat> this is so good. So things that I don't have left over will be... Things I don't have left over would be I ate both spring rolls. This spicy Kung Pao chicken, I'm so surprised no one wanted upstairs. Mm. <laughs> oh. Wow. I have issues. Metal fork, here we go. Wow. 
I mean, I was only doing that to show you up close what it would look like. So how are you today? How are you today? That's what I say. I'm showing you what I eat, the truth. Mmm. <laughs> I'm starting to hear. This is why I'm eating at like 1 in the morning. No. It's 11 because I just posted my video. Duh. It feels like 1 in the morning. Do you want to know why? So I had to wake up early today. Set my alarm for 9 or 9.30ish. I told you. I had to go to breakfast. So I bought these 12 hours ago pretty much. But they reheat just fine. This hash brown is to die for. Where's my hot sauce? Where's my hot sauce? Here's the hot sauce. All right. Cheers. Oh, my last bite of Amberlynn's burrito. Mmm. <laughs> that sounds really fun, but fun. Mmm. Oh my God. Wow. Mmm. With ranch too. Mmm. People would be like, "Are you okay?" Hey, <gasps> remember I told you those two days of fasting? <clears throat> it's, I'm gonna rebound. Here's my rebound. I'm rebounding, baby. As the chair squeaks for help. <laughs> Chair's like, wow, it's too much weight. Stop. So, um, Orleans in Atlanta right now. I'm looking for apartments. And you're like, why does he have to, like, do this world tour? Well, here's the thing. Orlin, I actually might put this on Orlin's channel to help him out. Um, he got sick from all those little cheat days. He just can't do it. He needs to be by a place of fruit, it's a fruit and vegetable terminal where we can buy in bulk for low prices. Buy in bulk. A case of mangoes, a case of peaches, a case of figs, a case of avocados, a case of tomatoes, things like that. Mmm. I say mm. because that's the only way he can like get his um, calories well, obviously from like maybe salmon here and there or nuts and seeds but really he needs a lot of fruits um, and those add up even if you're I don't care where you live if you're eating many of them, they add up. And they're so perishable, they go bad so fast and you don't want to waste them, so. You don't know what it's like at these terminals, at these farmer's markets, till you're actually there. So. He's basically finding something. I told him, if it's in America, there's fast food. As long as it's not in the middle of nowhere, you know. See, I mean, I need this stuff. Oh, what is that cheese, Paul? Ooh, there's that cheese, Paul. Mmm. Mmm. Edit that out. Ooh. I thought I was like, oh. <clears throat> I'm disgusting. Do you know why he's in Atlanta? Because I've been there when I was a performing violinist. I 
I went there to uh, perform Matt Cosmetics tour. <gasps> Ooh. And so I was there for two weekends. Weekend here performing, weekend here performing in Atlanta. In between, I was couch surfing on couchsurfing.com. I was, listen, because the MAC tour, you know, MAC Cosmetics, they didn't pay for my, hosp my <coughs> hotel or plane flights. They just paid for me to be there. You know, I got paid pretty good. It was like two, maybe $300 a day. I got paid, that was great. But I had to do this and this. Now the next weekend, this and this. Now the next weekend, this and this. I had to buy my own flights, my own accommodations, my Ubers and stuff. So I decided to do couch surfing. Just to see if, hey, let me crash on your couch. We'll be friends. And the first couch I crashed on was this guy and girl. They were married. They did couch surfing to like give back to the world. And um, meet new people. It gave them something to do as well. We're gonna go back to my chicken. That crispy fried chicken. And they were very nice. What was their name? Josh, I think Josh and... Wow. And Josh and Brittany. No, his name was Josh. Alex. And glasses, beard. Very nice. They had a dog. They took me to like a... The weekend I was there, a few days afterwards. Um, There's some like event in the park where they had musicians and people were drinking and eating. I was on my special fruits and vegetables diet. So this is why I bring it up to you. I was only eating raw fruits and vegetables. I was like a raw foodist. Which is a special type of vegan. And the way you do that and don't die is by eating tons of fruit. So I would have asked them kindly to drive me to the nearest fruits and vegetables market or something with good deals. And luckily they were like, oh yeah, we have to do groceries anyway. Let's go here. I think it was called Decalb. Your Decalb Market. Decalb. Decalb. International Fruits and Vegetables. Now it wasn't super cheap. But first first and for first and foremost, they had the stuff. They had a lot of stuff. And I could get like bananas for a good price, which were essential to me. Um Oh, I was so committed. I was so committed on that diet. On the airplanes traveling, if I couldn't find a fresh fruit or vegetable, I just want to eat. I did that for years. I was very committed. I'm a committed person in general. If I want something, if I like you, if I'm happy with how things are going, all of my energy and love and attention goes forth into making it happen. So if I don't like my diet, if I am not happy with the diet, I'm not going to stop. I mean, I'm going to stop, but I really made effort. Mmm. 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 I told Amberlynn, this is the best thing on the menu. This spinach looks like interesting. Oops. Best thing. But yeah, and then my second, so I was there for like four or five days, and I went to four or five days to another place. It was a, um, a gay guy's house. He was single. He had this nice house. <clears throat> he was kind of um, famous in the community for like rehabilitating people and building up the community. He did lots of workshops for like black people and um, like some kind of like people who just got out of, out of like prop, some kind of like center or something. He ran some big center. You guys are going to look look him up now. But he did um, workshops with African Americans, uh, workshops for gay people. He was famous all over the papers. He was very handsome. And back there, back then my sex drive wasn't like so like normal. Again, because of the diet. Because I wasn't eating enough fats. I didn't have any cholesterol. My hormones were not good. You're supposed to eat cholesterol. 
the the good type. Not not at all. Oh well, lesson learned. Point is, I um. I remember being flirtatious with him. I remember him being flirtatious with me. I remember, um, he, it, the rules was, when I was there, everyone eats vegan in the house. Now, he had his buddies come over, his friends, and he had, like, a boyfriend at the time. And I remember when he dropped me off at the bus station to take the bus back to the, um, take the bus back to the airport, he looked at me in the car, grabbed my hand, and he was like, you know, if I didn't have this boyfriend, I would have, you know, enjoy my time with you more <clears throat> and I was like oh okay <laughs> I know I know <clears throat> no objections this was before I met Orlin you guys so I had no objections I was like oh that's okay and I remember in the house when we only ate vegan he invited over the neighbors a gay guy who's like 60 years old like an older gay guy Stacy, who lived next door, a white lady, this little boy named Bryson, um, and then his the guy the guy's boyfriend um, boyfriend was there. I remember we were making vegan. I was so useless. Like, hey Nick, I was like, how can I help out to like? Because I didn't eat the cooked food. I had my I ate a mango and salad for dinner while everyone around me ate this beautifully smelling, delicious cooked garlic pesto. Um, ravioli, vegan this, cooked vegan, it, like it smell. But anyways, um, I was like, how can I help you at least? They're like, can you cut the garlic? I didn't know how to peel up a garlic. I didn't know how to cut a garlic. And I remember I was there at the kitchen and the, ma the handsome man, the famous one from uh, Atlanta, came behind me and he like put his hands around my waist. He was like, oh, let me help you there. How's it going? He just kind of went, just to feel. Ooh, that was nice. And his boyfriend was right there. I don't know if he saw. He was so handsome. Well, it's funny because when I had to get my fruits and vegetables, I mean, these people are volunteering to take care of me. That's what couch, couch, couch surfing is. Maybe not to the extent I was like, drive me here, drive me here. And I probably was very nice about it, knowing myself. <clears throat> I'm a guest in someone's home. I'm not demanding. I think they genuinely wanted to help me, you know, kind of pay it forward type of thing. That's why most people do it. You're not in it for money. You're not going to make money. It's for connection and unifying the world and learning about different people in your community. It feels good. I mean, if you're financially stable, say you don't have kids, say you are alone. Say so you're just rich. There's a lot of rich people in this world who are just lonely. It's not their fault they're rich. They're born rich, they got good lucky, you don't know. They're people too. Um And there there's poor people who need the help. <laughs> um You know, it was a beautiful thing. And what I did too was um I would give like little housewarming gifts. Um, chocolates and little flowers. Um, I wrote them cards. I did this this little stitching thing with uh, popsicles, and I interweaved them and like made this like yarn. I ain't silly. They probably threw it away, but I sh that showed that I cared. You know, I was like nineteen, twenty. Um, was that out of school? Yeah, I was out of school. I was twenty. Maybe I was twenty-one. Man, but when you look at me, I probably looked like 15. I was so, like, little. Anyways. Um, mm, this is so good. I want another breakfast burrito for my, my hash brown. No. I'm so sad. I'm. I'm probably thinking this way because Orlin's not here, and I'm just like, oh my god, I'm so lonely. Mmm. <laughs> but 
But yeah. The guy though, the second guy, remember the the, the straight couple? Said bye bye, they had the doggy. I think they had a baby too. Went to this guy's house. Well, when it was time for my fruits and vegetables. I guess I remember I was eating mangoes and salad at the dinner table when everyone else was cooking. That cooked vegan food. And it wasn't just for me, they said that was the rule. Because he would have roommates and lots of couch surfers and they said just to like make everyone happy. That's the rule is vegan in the house. You can eat whatever you want outside the house, but in the house you have to eat vegan. I don't know if that's still the rule. And maybe fish was an exception. I don't know. He said vegan. He probably said it to make me feel happy. It was probably accommodating because that's just... Because he wasn't vegan. His boyfriend was vegan, so why would you do that in the house? They weren't Buddhist or anything, so... Maybe they're giving me a little fib to make me feel welcome, which is fine. I remembered it to this day. <laughs> Isn't it funny people tell you things you remember like all these years later? Mm-hmm. Mm. So he took me to that same farmer's market that the straight couple took me to. Alex and Stacy were I'm mixing up names, it doesn't matter. You are to call market. So, shout out to Orlin who's watching this from Atlanta. It's north of Atlanta though. She was investigating, is this something long term I could be happy with type of thing. Ah. Because Orlin does like cheating, but he cheated too much on food. <laughs> too many cheat days. Here we go. I know it looks gross, but this is so greasy and cheesy. Mmm. 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 Oh. Oh my God. Man, my chairs are getting squeakier and squeakier. You hear that? They're always squeaking. And I'm not even that heavy. I'm an average American weight, honestly. Mm. Yeah, I remember I kind of flirted with him or tried to see. And yeah, my hormones were out of, out of whack back then. But I still felt attracted. I remember I was sitting on the couch. I went for a bike ride. No one was home. I was—I had keys to go in and out of the house. No one was home, and I got back from my little bike ride by myself. I took a shower, cleaned off, and I was shirtless and just in shorts, no underwear. I was sitting on the couch, and the little cat came up to me and started like going like this with her paw on down there. And I grabbed my phone. I took a photo of the cat going like this, and I said, "Help your cats." going at it or something and, he, and then he said something like oh the cat found the goods or bad bad kitty wink face bad bad kitty yeah the cat was like oh, beep 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 <clears throat> excuse me just something i mean just i think that's the only thing oh i got a tour a tour of his bedroom but his boyfriend was there too and apparently this guy put a big window in the shower so when you're showering you can look outside um and you could see the neighbors. And the boyfriend was like, see, don't you think this is weird? Don't you, th please agree with me. We need a curtain, we need a shower curtain. We need um, a bl blinds, waterproof blinds. It was in the shower that gets wet, you know? And the guy was like, no, that's the purpose of it. It's supposed to be free and open. And um, the boyfriend was not having it. He's like, I hate showering here. Cause I don't think he lived there full time. They were going back and forth, I think. Well, the boyfriend was going back and forth. Because the guy, remember the handsome guy, the famous guy of Atlanta, that was his house. I think he had multiple houses. Yeah, he had m many houses. But the boy just turned 18, I think. 
I think he had just turned 18, so he had never done it before. He'd never been with a guy before. I think he was, he was very shy, too. Oh, and I remember. In the car ride. <clears throat> when um, the famous Atlanta guy took me to the bus stop to go back to New York City. You know, to take, take the airport. He told me, like, oh, yeah, if I'd had this boyfriend, we probably would have, like, had more fun or something like that. And then um, he'd mentioned to me that the new boyfriend was new. You know, the 18-year-old. He's like, you know, we ha still haven't had you know what. And he, there's like touching and kissing and touching, but nothing more. And I'm getting to a point where it's like, I don't know. I need more. <laughs> and I, I remember saying, oh, 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 I'm so sorry. Or, oh, poor thing. He's scared. Nervous. <clears throat> but yeah, I remember that juice. I was like, why is he telling me this on the day I'm leaving? Do you want me to come back? Hmm. Orland doesn't like him. I showed him. Because I've told Orland about so many experiences I've had. You know, the couch surfing thing is one. And I went to another couch surfer guy in New York City. He was like a part-time nudist. I didn't even know. Until I got there. Anyways, I showed what these people look like to Orland. I'm like, this is this, this is it. Um... He and I have different types, but at the same time, it's like you would think. It's just interesting how we can both look at someone. I can be like, wow, she's gorgeous. And you can look at her and be like, no. Or I could look at a, a guy and be like, that's not my type. And you can look at him and be like, oh my God. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Sober. If you're drunk, this mush mash of spinach looks will turn you on. Look, it looked like a frog. I could I could get it with a frog. You know what I mean? I could oh mish mash, we'll just keep it there. I'm gonna be more careful. You know what I mean? Like if you're drunk, oh that looks really hot. <clears throat> you know, anything. I've talked to so many people while intoxicated, and then I get to my senses, and I'm like, "How is the alcohol talking?" No, no. I've even like with other YouTubers, I'd be like, "Hey, hey, hey!" And the next day, I'm like, "I am so sorry." They're like, "No, we know you, Nick. You're crazy. It's all, it's all good." Luckily, I've never had anyone like, like grossed out. Like, oh my god, because people know me. At least you know. I can think of two girls I did <laughs> I did that to other YouTubers and they understood, you know. But um it does happen. Maybe so much not with adults, but I still feel like a kid, so that's my excuse. Mm. I have this baked potato down here. And I don't have I have a biscuit. I don't eat biscuits. I never do. They always just come with the food. I wish I could tell the people at KFC, Popeyes, Church's Chicken, any place that gives you a biscuit. I just want to be like, throw in a little sprinkle of potato wedges, even if it's just two of them. Mmm. Because I'll more likely eat it, enjoy it, and finish the food. This is a waste. I hate biscuits. I need to just say, don't give it to me. If they don't substitute, I just be like, no. No, no biscuit. Save it for someone who's going to eat it. I just don't. Here, I'll take a bite. It's just... It's a little buttery. Mm, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's just dry. Dry. It sounds hard. It's actually not. It's pretty soft. Oh my god, no. I can imagine eating one, like, you know, um... Some of the competitive eaters, they'll eat a whole thing at once, like the whole thing in their mouth. Imagine eating one whole biscuit in one bite. Oh, my mouth. Water. Hose me down. Hose me down with water. Biscuits. Ooh. They are not good. Ooh. Anyone feel me on that? You feel me? Oh, I was watching this. Um, oh, what's her name? I follow her on Twitter. She has these really long nails. They're like out to here. And she doesn't usually show her, show her face. She'll just show the hand. 
I think I've talked this about this before, and she'll do hand emojis like, you need this. And what I'm saying is, you get all the information and you make a decision. And you have one chance. One, ch and all you see is the hand. It's like a square, it's like Instagram. And it's just a hand moving and talking with big long nails. Well, I watched a video of her the other day, and she shows her face. And she said something kind of funny, which I relate to. She's like, why is it when I'm ready to spend my money, appreciate my money, buy me something good that I've worked hard to get, I find that my savings is good, finally, everything's pay, pay, you know, the house is, or the house is paid off, or not even that, it's like the rent is done, the phone bill is done, the car insurance is done, the cell phone, did I say that already, you know, electricity is done, the baby's got the, you know, everything's good, and then all of a sudden, when you have that money that you're ready to spend, boom, she says, all of a sudden, the car breaks down. You need a new transmission. Boom. All of a sudden, your dog gets sick, have to go take him to the vet. Boom. All of a sudden, your something, something happened. Like, she's like, why is it every time I'm raised, spend my money and appreciate my money, I have to pay for something that needs to happen? You know, the child gets sick, blah, 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 you know. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so relatable. Someone asked me, mozzarella sticks or cheese curds? Oh, here they are. I'm like, where are the cheese curds? I think I'd say cheese curds. Mmm. And here's a mozzarella stick. I still taste biscuit in my mouth. What is ill? Sorry, I had to do one swish. Swish, swish. Ew. Had to do this is very fried. Pulling off some of these like hard fried things. Now I do like a mozzarella stick. Don't get me wrong. And, yeah, the girl with the fingernails, she kept going, you feel me? You feel me? You feel me? I like that expression. You feel me? It means like, do you, do you do you agree? Do you understand? Do you comprehend? Mm. Watch, that's not what, what it means at all. Pretty sure that's what it means. Well, I finished the noodles. I feel better now. <clears throat> Amberlynn had a lot of food left over. Oh. My belly is huge. There's, I still have those creepy mirrors. My parents don't want to take them out, and they won't even let me. Well, I didn't bother covering them up. I got used to it. You guys, remember that ghost paranormal stuff I was going through? It's gone now. It's been gone for a while, but it follows Orlin. The ghosts follow Orlin. I haven't had any creepy, like, shivers down my spine or, like, I see something in the corner move or the lights start twitching or like, oh, I'm so scared. Like, I haven't had one of those experiences since he was here. Because since he be gone. <laughs> yeah, no, like, uh-uh. No. They follow him. The ghosts do. What else do I want? The Cheetos are good. Hush brown. I know a lot of brown fried food. Don't you worry. I'm gonna eat some steam. This, I don't even count the spinach, it's my vegetables. Today is a big day of eating because I am aiming to eat five servings of vegetables every day on top of one can of sardines minimum of a day. That's a lot of like eating, but if I'm only doing one mukbang and that's the majority of my calories, that's the basis of my food, you know what I mean? Like two handfuls of berries, a tomato salad, some steamed cabbage, and um, a little handful of walnuts, you know, some kind of like plant fiber, plant antioxidants, the plants with the meat, you know, but this isn't even just meat, this is junk. But still, it's gonna make a huge difference in, in sardines for the omegas to bounce out the fatty acids, whatever. Make sure I don't die. 
Could you imagine what if I died doing these videos? At least I know what to do. Information is powerful. I always say information is power. Like, um, for example, I, I shouldn't even tell you this on YouTube, but I have some various different connections on YouTube. I have people that help me with the analytics. They work for Google. They work with uh, YouTube. I have IT specialists, monetization specialists, um, analytical, she's called a strategic coach or whatever. I have different connections on the YouTube platform who help me with stuff. And um, there's this one guy that doesn't really ever do anything for me, but his information is such a wealth that it kind of just makes me think of, there's a fly. I swat a fly, don't you, come, don't you get mad. That's another reason. Summertime, the flies, ugh. But yeah, there's a, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, he doesn't really do anything physically like, oh, give me more money, boom. Or, oh, make me get more views, boom. I mean, not like he could, I guess. There's no magic button. <clears throat> or like, why is the video not being recommended like they used to? Well, there's this, 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 well, there's all these explanations. But it's very, it's such a wealth of information that it's power. It's power to me. That's what I'm trying to get. Knowledge is power. Information is power. Like, for me to be aware of it, being aware, observant. I'm going to smack this fly in a minute. Trust me. This fly's going to be dead. Um, and I, ch and I remember, uh, Orlin asked me, like, like, you know, like, every time you talk to him, nothing gets done. Algorithm's still the same. They won't explain why. Oh, you know what they just did yesterday? They took off verification. You know the little check marks? On all YouTubers, unless they have 20 million followers or more. You can't be verified. And I'm like, because all of my things were verified. They used to do it at 100,000. I'm going to get this fly. Mother, it used to be. It used to be. It don't make me. It used to be. I'm gonna. It used to be. Um. A hundred thousand. Where did it go? I hope it's dead and dead. It used to be, <laughs> so it's going to make a little thing out of this. It used to be 100,000 subscribers. I can't die. It used to be, <laughs> it used to be 100,000 subscribers. That is when you would apply for Mana's, uh, can't talk right now. That's fucking fly. It used to be. Now, if you have 100,000 100, subscribers, they would verify your channel. I mean, like, this is a legitimate channel. It is who it says it is. So that people who are looking for you, they know it's you. I guess that was... It. Now there's too many people on YouTube who have 100,000 subscribers. Now 100,000 people is not much people at all in the eyes of YouTube. Back in the day, that was a lot of people. You know what I mean? Back in the day when YouTube first started, 30,000 views was a lot of people. I mean, it still is. Imagine 30,000 people in a room. You can't. You go to an auditorium, like a big stage to see a Broadway show. There's only like one to 2,000 people in that theater. Like 1.5, 1.4, 1.4. Okay, imagine 30 of those theaters put together. That's like an arena of a baseball field. A baseball arena. Football stadium. 30, 40,000 people, still a lot. On YouTube, it's like, oh, that's not what you use. But uh, anyways, so what they did. Um, ow! is they made it so you have to have 20 million followers in order to get verified. Now, I want to know, I would love to be a fly, not this one that just got swatted and killed, a smart fly, not a fruit fly. Fruit flies are dumb. Okay, the fruit flies are dumb. I want to be a smart fly that is careful, observant, sneaky, but with reason up in the corner of the wall, looking down, 
and listening to the meeting. I would love to be a fly on that wall and her heard what great ideas came out these people's heads and mouths where they thought it was a great idea to say, here's the figure. 20 million will be the figure that is the minimum for being deemed, being worth a verification sticker. What went through their head that that made sense? I can't even name someone with, to you who has 20 million subscribers other than PewDiePie. Shane Dawson doesn't even have 20 million subscribers. Trisha Paytas, Joey Graceffa, Rosina Pazano, whatever the F, F her last name is, Rosanna. Uh, Colleen Bollinger, Miranda Sings, these are uh, Tana Mojo. Does Jake Paul even have 20 million? I think he has like 13 or 14. Wh wh who is he? Why would you not want to verify your most prevalent faces on the on your platform? You it makes sense to include in this new terms that the most prevalent creators bringing in the most traffic to your platform should be verified so people know that's the real channel, not someone else's channel. That I can't even name someone that has twenty million other than Ellen DeGeneres, and that's cheating. It's all the TV shows, the, uh, what's the, um, SNL, Saturday Night Live channel. What other channels have more than 20 million? Um, again, look, this late night talk, Jimmy, Jimmy Campbell, Kim, Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel. Okay, that's cheating. They came from TV. And a lot of them has purchased their bought followers. I, I, anyway, the biggest audiences are the creators. The American creators have the biggest genuine real followers. You know what I mean? And they're... I just... I want to know why they thought that was a great idea. Anyways, so yes. Sometimes... Back to my point. Sometimes things happen on this platform that don't make sense and it's kind of a waste of time. But knowledge is still power and it's good. I would feel more... I would have more power if I asked my IT specialist, I asked my strategist like, person, and I asked the reason for that. And knowing a reason won't change that I don't get a verification. But not, maybe not in that circumstance, but in other circumstances. Knowledge is power. It gives you more avenues to take, more choices, more opportunities. It gives you more um, wealth in the terms of action. What I'm going to do because I know more. Wow, I have issues. I really, what have I... You'd think I smoked something before these videos. <laughs> oh, philosophical. Like my um, valedictorian from my high school, pothead. Salutatorian, pothead as well. And I remember not the grade above me, but two grades above me. Um, oh, I don't want to say her name. You guys are going to research her, but she, was she valedictorian? Salutatorian? I think she was valedictorian. Smartest girl, best G GPA, best grades, best AT scores, whatever. Number one girl. And she always smoked pot always <sighs> you'd think i just did because they say it like opens up different parts of your brain it makes you more creative not for me i don't really like it too much i have done it a few times you guys told you i'm starting to like it a little bit more i've um experimented it not not experimented but i've enjoyed it with some of my youtuber friends where it's legal you know um california where else is it legal Nevada. Yeah, Candy State. Candy. Um, I didn't do, I didn't smoke with candy, but I'm just saying, like, there's a state, Canada. There's other places where it's legal. I think it should be nationwide, but we're not going to get into that discussion. All I'm saying is that, like, I'm starting to like it more than I did when I was a kid. But still, I wouldn't call myself more, like, focused and able to do work and perform well. But then again, you never know. I've never played violin in that state of mind. <laughs> I would be nervous, too. That's a $10,000 piece of wood. D -d 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 Google, how expensive are violins? Uh, obviously not those like slabs of wood that are glued together in a factory, not just like a little, you know, student violin, which is, I'm not, you know, degrading. I'm just saying, no one's gonna spend thousands of dollars on violin for someone who's just starting. You don't know if they're gonna continue a year later. You know, you have to kind of earn it through interest and excellence of uh, mastering third position or something you know and then you're just like okay this guy clearly likes violin give him a better violin anyways just google how expensive they can be they're more expensive than people's houses i remember one of my violin teachers i've had like five violin teachers but one of them actually six 
seven if you count one of my college professor violin teachers who I went back and forth with. Anyway, so about, about seven violin teachers. One of them, $200,000. Two. Zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. For his wood. Beep, 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 beep. You know, they're expensive. And that's, I mean, that's, that is an expensive one for sure. But it's not the most expensive. They go into the millions and multi-millions. Double digits. Eight figure. Eight figure. Eight figure. That's my type. <laughs> Uh, yeah, eight is that, can I add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Oh, that's nine. No, that's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The multi-million, more than 10 million. Um, eight figure. Yeah, they do go up that high. So, my violin was my most expensive, most precious gift for my family. You guys know, I've told this story a million times, but it was my birthday gift, it was my Christmas gift. For like five or six years, I didn't get any presents or anything for years, and I didn't care because my violin was my baby. And my violin, it's pretty good for, you know, I'd say 90% of people who play a violin, that's good enough for. Um, well, maybe 80 or 70, because actually there's a lot of professionals out there that wouldn't like it. It has limitations for advanced, advanced, advanced people, students. Um, in the upper registers, the sound gets choked. And Orland's like, well, what determines that? How do you avoid that? I'm like, it all comes down how, to how it was made. Shaving off different parts of the, underneath of the violin when it was created, they like shave off, um, it's like sculpting out of wood. And it has curves and divots inside the violin to create sound waves and have certain vibrations. And the little chips off the corners, it's like chiseling. It's like, a like handy shop class, you know, when you're building stuff. Um, like woodwork. Um, can make all the difference in vibration. So that and the age and who played it, how it was maintained, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, that was that is the most expensive thing I've ever owned in my life. Um, not even my car cost my phone. I bought a used car in Florida for $9,000. Uh, my car in Colombia was... I want to say seven. I think it was seven, maybe eight. But yeah, my violin has been the most expensive thing in my life. Now, yes, $7,000 is a cheap car. So it's not like, you know. Um, but I did that deliberately. I'm not going to waste my own car, not know if I'm going to live here or whatever. So why am I telling you this? I don't even know. Oh, I should get going. Short video. I'm usually here for at least an hour these days. I was talking to one of my uh, friends who, it's a long story, anyways. She is heavily involved on YouTube and um, she asked me about, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I have this YouTuber friend who was asking me very specific questions to help me have a certain situation. And um, I'm not gonna say who, of course this dies when I'm in the middle of talking, but I'm not going to say who. Um, she's like triple my subscribers. But anyways, she, her friend who was helping me through a situation, um, asked me like, you know, how long are your videos normally? I've noticed they're pretty long right now. That's why I bring it up to him. Like, my videos right now are like an hour long on average. That it is going up. I don't know if I'm running my mouth more. I don't know if I'm getting really slow at eating. I don't know if I'm just have a lot to say these days. My average video for the history of Nikocado Avocado, and this is on all of my channels, not just this one, not my main, not my third. Is this going on number two? It's going on to number two or Orleans. Um, I have to ask Orlin if he wants this there because he doesn't want to kill the channel for not being able to post. He's so busy and he's not going to do a mukbang. So anyways, I... Yeah, yeah. so the, the friend was like, I've noticed they're like an hour long. I'm like, an hour and a half? I'm starting to see lots of two hour videos. Like what? And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of a new thing. I don't know why, I just can't stop talking. And she's like, does it make people upset? I'm like, some people are like, oh my God, I can't watch it all. I'm sk skipping out. I'm like, but that's 
the very thing. They can skip out whenever they want, but they feel like they're missing more. Um, but the people who skipped out after 20 minutes, they, were, they weren't going to stay for the, four, the full 40 minutes of like an average video length back in a year ago. And then it's the same person who went to stay for an hour and a half video or a two hour video. So it doesn't matter if my video is two hours long, one hour long, or 45 minutes long. If you're the type of person to stay for 10 minutes or so, you're going to stay for as long as you're going to decide to stay, regardless of it's, if it's, you know, half hour, hour, hour and a half, two hours. I think people start to feel like they're missing out on stuff, but again, they still wouldn't have stayed for it, even if it was half the amount, because they weren't going to anyway. And there are people, believe it or not, who just love to spend time with me. I don't know. <laughs> like, people love my long videos. And I know they're always doing stuff. So, anyways, I have been talking enough. There's a lot of water weight coming in right now. This is a lot of sodium. But, um, I'm also very sleepy. <sighs> time to go to sleep. But this was delicious. Shout out to Amberlynn Reed. These were all of her favorite foods. Oh, my God. In here. Um, these were all of her favorite foods on a cheat day if she could have one um i don't know if she's still having cheat days maybe she is all i know is she, this is her stuff minus the cheese curds and mozzarella sticks but baked potato uh kfc chicken potato wedges kung pao chicken she also likes singapore noodles which i did not get yeah none of the re none of the restaurants around me have it i'm like what and she's like, you could get it anywhere. I'm like, I guess not. Maybe in Kentucky. I love Kentucky. We love Kentucky. I've been to Kentucky once at the airport. And I didn't even realize I was in Kentucky. So the airport in Kentucky is right on the border with Ohio. It's like Ohio and Kentucky's right underneath it. And I went to Ohio to go see um, Steph Pappas and Be Loves Life. And I flew to there because it was... The cheapest and it made the most sense to rent a car. And I drove all the way up to um, Columbus. Man, it was a long drive by myself at like 3 in the morning to catch the airplane. I was exhausted. Wow, I want to go sleep now just thinking about how exhausted, how exhausted I was on that car ride. <laughs> it was so long all by myself. And it was probably only like two or three or four hours, but let's ask Siri, where's my phone? How long from Cincinnati or the um, Cincinnati, Kentucky airport to Columbus? I think it was only two hours or an hour and a half. I'd say two, but it felt like an eternity because I was so, so tired. That's my problem when I do collaborations. I go see people, I get excited, we do a bunch of videos and I just don't have time. Bye. <laughs> I appreciate your time. Bye-bye. It's about the